Hi guys. So, I told you guys that I was going to come on here and explain some of the things that have been going on and tell you why I have been gone. Disclaimer, this will be a long one and this is for adult content only um just because this will be discussing um some adult content as far as mental health if you do suffer with mental health issues and don't want to hear about this and it might cause some issues for you i ask that you choose choose not to watch, uh, watch this video so, with that being said, we're just going to jump right in. Many of you know that I, many of you may, uh, may know that I have severe depression, bipolar, and PTSD. For those of you that are new, you would not know this. Um, sorry, excuse me. For those of you that are new, you wouldn't know that, um, but I do have these issues. The first issue I want to discuss is PTSD, because that rules a lot of my life. PTSD can come in many forms, many sizes, to many different people. No, I'm not a cop, or no, I wasn't a cop. No, I'm not a soldier. No, I was not a soldier. Um, I am a plain Jane. I got my PTSD through many ordinary things that people just don't think of uh, can cause PTSD. I got it through several years of abuse. Abuse when I was a child, abuse from many relationships with different people in my life. And so that's where we are. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. The reason I am discussing PTSD with you guys today is because that's part of why I disappeared for as long as I did. Um, several months ago, I was just laying in bed and was sleeping and had a nightmare. The nightmare was about, um, my ex. Um, and the ex that I'm talking about is the ex that, um, was very abusive, but, uh, the night that the nightmare that I am discussing is the night that he raped and tried to kill me. Um... And if you are like, well, you're, uh, you look like you're a pretty strong individual yourself. And yes, you can't tell because, uh, you know, all you really see is my face. But um, those of you that know me have, you know, seen more of me. Um, and yes, I am a stronger person. But at that time, I had just had back surgery, like, a week or two before and um, so I was uh, still on bed rest and he had been drinking uh, binge drinking nonstop for like three days he was uh, and when I say on a binge drink I mean on a binge drink he literally woke up drunk um, I was supposed to stay in bed, but my son needed us to come get him from North Dakota. 
So we made the trip to North Dakota. Um, we made it to where I was able to lay in the car. Shh, don't tell my surgeon. Because um, he would not take the trip without me. And my daughter was not going to let him take the trip with me without her. <laughs> that was not happening. So it was me, my daughter, and him hiking all the way to North Dakota. Well, not hiking, but, you know, driving all the way up to North Dakota. Him drinking the whole time. Yeah, that was a fun trip. Got my son... Fought the whole way home with him because he was drinking the whole time and would not let my son drive. Oh, did I tell you I had had back surgery so I couldn't drive? Made a three-day trip turn into a two-day trip, or a, a day-and-a-half trip. Because it's supposed to be, yeah. Um, it usually takes a normal human being about two and a half days, three days to get there. Because, you know, a normal human being would stop and sleep. Not this guy. So, um, anyway, we made it there. And we made it back. Got home. I went back into bed, barely able to move, but got in bed. <laughs> he came into the bedroom, started fighting with me as to why I was laying back down. All I did was lay down in the car, proceeded to remind him that I was supposed to be on bed rest. Um, he was like, yeah, da, 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 you know, and whatnot. He got mad at me, stormed out of the house. I fell asleep. Several hours later, he came home. I woke up with him on top of me. And he was inside of me. He said, if you're not going to give it to me willingly, I am going to take it. And he did. Um... Sorry guys, I had to, I had to stop filming for a bit. Um, talking about this does get a little bit to me, so, but anyway, um, yeah, so where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, and he then put his hands around my neck and started squeezing. Had, had the one hand like this as he grabbed his knife out of the drawer and we're talking a knife that is like the blade is like this long and he was laying on top of and I mean I'm in a metal I'm I've got this major back brace that I'm having to wear at night at night so I don't twist and I have this thing on my spine 
are on me. Um, and he's, and this brace is a really thick, heavy, hard plastic, you know, so I'm not able to like twist and turn and, you know, not that I would be able to anyway, because like I said, I had just had back surgery and he's got me pinned down with my arms on my side, uh, you know, so it's not like I can hit him or scratch him or anything. He's pinned me down with his legs. And I then scream, get, and I was trying to scream, get out, uh, get off me. And I it was able to say, get off me, you son of a bitch. And I said it loud enough to where my son, who was on the other end of the uh, how, uh, trailer, woke up and heard us. And he come running into the room just as he had grabbed his blade out of out of the drawer. My son pushed him off of me. My daughter who was home, who was 15 at the time, put herself over me just in case he got away from my son. She then helped me get out of bed. My son was able to get him tackled down or whatever, my son, my daughter, and I left immediately. But this replays in my head. Not so much the portion of my son and my daughter and I leaving the house, but what happened to me during that whole ordeal. And then, as this is triggered during my PTSD, this is my PTSD triggered, but as that was being triggered, that threw me into um, June of 2020, which is... The year my brother died. And me trying to save his life. And unfortunately, not able to do it. And him... The actual replay of his death. And then my brain playing the whole why'd you kill me bitch picture and that's the guilt you know but it's um his voice his face that i see during this ptsd episode you know that's sitting there going Why'd you, uh, why'd you let it kill me? Why'd you let it die? Uh, why'd you let me die? Why weren't you smart enough to save my life, bitch? These are the things that happen to me during a PTSD episode.
and it's not easy and it goes over and over and over and over and over and then that hits uh, causes my depression to come into play And when that happens, I've got, I'm a juggler playing, uh, I'm a, I'm a jungle, uh, a jungle, I'm a jungle, I'm a juggler that's got too many balls. And eventually those balls end up falling on the floor. Um, and when that happens, the balls are falling on the floor. And they just eventually keep falling and then I'm like well, what do I do now and I can't get out of that and then I'm in the uh, corner backed in a corner crying like a bubbling idiot and then my dog who is my support animal who normally can control all of this can't control me can't control me. No, she can't control me. She can't control what's going on because at that point it has gone too far because I have missed taking medication because of the the replays that keep playing in my head and keep playing in my head and I think I've taken my meds but I haven't because my depression and my PTSD has gotten the best of me and I've missed doses of medication and I haven't realized I've missed doses of medication because I'm sleeping too much and I'm or I'm not sleeping and I don't realize that uh, day has turned into night and night has turned into day and so I'm in this endless cycle that doesn't want to end or it can't end one of uh, one of the other And it's gotten so bad at this point that my children say, you're concerning us. And I said, well, good, because I'm concerned myself. And my kids and I decide the best thing for me to do is check myself in and get straight. And by what, uh, what I mean by get straight is check myself into the psychiatric hospital, get right with my medications so that we know I'm on my medications. Because at this point, I don't know if I've taken my meds or not. You know, we don't know if I'm on this roller coaster because I've taken too many meds. I'm not on enough. Uh, I'm not on enough of the medication. We don't know what the hell's going on. So. The safest thing for me to do is check myself in so that they can do what needs to be done. And unfortunately, what needs to be done is you get put on a hold, a psychiatric hold for 73, uh, 72 hours, which is three days. And what they do is they kind of basically take you off all, uh, take you off everything and start you over. Well, by taking you off of everything, that means you're basically on no medication for two to three days. So that way your body has a way of clearing its, it, cleaning itself out. So that way they know whether or not you were all doped up 
or whether or not you weren't taking anything. And usually by day two, they know whether or not you've been taking anything or not. So by day three, they were like, okay, she hasn't been on anything. Well, with me, they knew right away. Because they took the blood and they said, guess what? She's on nothing. And that's the good thing about uh, has, uh, if, uh, if you're on a regiment like me, they take your blood, they know. She hasn't been taking anything. Okay. So they can say, okay, she has not been taking her meds. They put me on my meds. But because I was so out of it, it took me about two weeks to get it right again. Or right enough to leave the hospital. And then I did outpatient stuff. And then, you know, all that fun stuff. But... I am going to cut this video a little short. Um, I'll do another uh, video later. Um, I did not want to make this a long video, and it's already like 22 minutes long. Um, I'll do another one um, maybe tomorrow. Um, I don't want to make it too long just because it can be depressing for some people. So I'm going to cut this video short for those of you who watch it. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thanks to everybody and to let people know that there is help out there. And to please reach out. Reach out to family, friends. There are people out there that can help you. And know that we all love you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.